My hands are so sweaty, I can barely grip the steering wheel, and I keep feeling like I have to pull over to go to the bathroom. I'm on my way to hang out with a guy for the first time in like two years. I had gotten divorced about seven years earlier, and I had my doubts about whether I could ever meet that one true soulmate who would fit with all my weirdness, but I'm someone who doesn't give up easily. Since my divorce, my life had mainly consisted of working from home with my spiritual healing practice, occasional dinner outings with female friends, and going to my precious but tiny church where there were three men, one who was married, one who was in his 80s, and one I had already dated. <laughs> I didn't really wanna do online dating, and no one was trying to set me up with any guys, so I decided to try to set myself up with men who I thought looked promising as potential partners. I had met this guy through a mutual friend who had hired us to play at her wedding several years earlier back in Boston where my family lives. I live in San Diego, but he had said if I'm ever in town, I should let him know and we could jam. So here I am on my way to what I'm hoping might become more than just a jam session. The guy is a really well-rounded musician. He plays jazz and R&B and rock, and he also works in the sciences. And he has this understated kind of geeky but cool vibe about him. Once I compose myself enough to get out of the car and I'm in his studio singing, I start to feel like a connection is happening. We're bonding over our mutual love for Stevie Wonder and Luther Vandross, and he's telling me about some of his upcoming gigs, and he mentions that his band is playing at a swing dance event that Friday night. As I recall, he doesn't actually invite me, but he goes on about how wonderful the swing dance scene is and says that I should check it out back in San Diego. That doesn't sound appealing at all. <laughs> I love dancing, but my only previous experience with partner dancing was at a swing dance years ago, and I remember feeling like I was being passed from one man to the next like a sack of potatoes. Nonetheless, I consider going to his dance because I want to see him again. But what's the point? He's going to be on stage, and I don't want to dance with a bunch of random guys. I want to dance with him. So I slip in a comment about my favorite cafe in Boston, and he says the magic words, maybe we should go sometime when you're in town. So as soon as I get home, I get on Facebook and I send him a detailed message with all the times that I'm free over the next week before I leave town. No response. So then I sent him another message apologizing for that message and for the fact that I probably kept him up way too late the night before. And I sent him a song that I think he might find inspiring. All I see from him on Facebook is a post to his followers about the swing dance event, no response to my messages, and certainly no personal invitation for that Friday night. I have plans anyway. I was gonna hang out with my friend Laurie, and out of the blue she says, she just really wants to go dancing. <laughs> this is weird. Laurie and I have never gone dancing together. So I tell her this guy who has totally blown me off is actually playing with his band at a swing dance thing on Friday night, which he posted on Facebook, but I can't go because he didn't invite me. And she says, Laura, you don't need an invitation to the rest of your life. It's on Facebook. It's a public event. Anyone can go. She says, maybe we should just go see what it's like. It could be fun. So I put on a dress just in case, but there's no way I'm going. If I show up uninvited, he's gonna think I'm a stalker. And my fun evening with my friend will turn into a total disaster. So Laurie and I linger for a couple of hours over dinner at a nice restaurant. And then we go to Target and pick out new towels for her Airbnb. <laughs> and it's 10 o'clock. And she suggests we should go check out that dance, which started at 7. Despite my extreme protest, she somehow gets me to the parking lot. I refuse to get out of the car. And she says, in an uncharacteristically compelling and insistent tone, Laura, you have to go in there and face your fear. You're gonna regret it if you don't go in there. Next thing I know, I'm in this dance hall and it's like I've been transported to the 1930s. 
His band sounds really good. Couples are swirling and twirling around the floor doing the Lindy Hop, which looks completely impossible to ever learn, but magical. These two friendly guys come up and ask us to dance. And despite the fact that we totally missed the beginner lesson, they seem unfazed. They move us around on the dance floor with a surprising amount of grace despite our ineptness. And I start to hope the guy in the band is noticing. There's no eye contact from him. Just a cordial but awkward moment at the end where he says hello and declines our invitation to join us for ice cream. At the airport on the way back to San Diego, I see his name pop up in my Facebook messages. And I get a little nervous because I've since sent more messages apologizing for the earlier messages. But then I tell myself, maybe he realized what he was missing out on. And then I look down and I see that he wrote, you've weirded me out a little. <laughs> Ouch, I'm mortified. Maybe I should just give up on love. And then I remember something else he said. You should check out the swing dance scene back in San Diego. And that is exactly what I resolved to do. There's a monthly dance happening that Saturday night and nothing can keep me away. I show up by myself for the beginner lesson and from that point, I don't stop. I go to every dance and every lesson I possibly can. I go from being in bed by 10.30 most nights to being out multiple nights a week until 1 a.m. Some nights I dance with 15 different guys, most of whom are great. It's all so much fun. And while it's been a few years now, and I still have a lot to learn about Lindy Hop and about relationships, I still show up for the dance. <laughs>